All right, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put it all together. We're gonna create a 30 second commercial. It's got about maybe 12 clips in it. The one clip I already did already. Uh, my talent hasn't shown up yet. Um, I've got all the lights set up. I've done, um, I cleaned up, uh, made sure my batteries were all charged up and we're ready to go. Um, so well, let's go step through all the different things to do before you start recording. Um, starting here on the menu, we'll just work our way down. Um, you know, we talk about lens correction app, um, but really with this Tamron 24-70, we don't have anything available, so we can pretty much skip that. Um, next one over is white balance, which we're going to be talking about here in a sec. Uh, auto lighting optimizer, have that turned off. Um, color space, course RGB, sRGB. White balance shift, I'm not going to do anything with that. Um, next one over is, in terms of for us, high ISO. Um, speed noise reduction, we're just gonna put that on high because I'm gonna be shooting at somewhat higher ISOs, maybe 3200 sometimes when I'm shooting really wide and it's nighttime right now, so I don't have a lot of natural light coming in. And I've changed all the light bulbs um, to bulbs that were much higher output. So it's just kind of flooding the kitchen. Um, and they're also higher CRI uh, bulbs so the color should look a lot better and what we're going to be doing in this video is going to go in a very cool look in the first part of the video to the end it's going to have a very warm look and the music's going to go kind of change along at the way as, as well and our actor our actress um, is not she's not a model or a, a professional actress so she doesn't have any lines um, in terms of audio there is one that we're going to have a little bit of audio with but uh, uh, just that one clip so but I'll definitely have the microphone on here so let's go back so highlight tone priority I got that off uh, let's see movie um, size I'm gonna be doing this all in uh, 1080 there might be one clip I might do in slow motion um, I actually shot it earlier of uh, water dripping I don't know if I'm gonna use slow motion or fast motion I recorded it both ways fast motion normal speed um, so now we, we got the uh, 1080, 24 frames a second, and all eye compression. Uh, next one down, sound recording. I've got the Rode VideoMic Pro. I've turned it all the way down, one click up, and that should be fine for what we're doing here. Again, we're not using much audio at all. Uh, let's go back. And there's nothing really on this page. We are gonna use an external monitor later because I'm gonna actually put this in the dishwasher is one of the shots. Um, I might need the HDMI cord to make sure I've got it framed up so I can actually see what I'm doing because I'm going to be pouring outside the, uh, the dishwasher. So then going back to here, uh, let's go ahead. So if with nothing there, I'm going to go ahead hit the info button. I'm shooting at 50th second because we're shooting at 24 frames per second. We double it 50th a second. Um, F5, um, I'm guessing that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to probably make a judgment call once she gets here because I'm going to see how much she goes in and out of focus on this first wide shot. And this is about as wide as I'm going. The rest of them are going to be much more um, very tight. Uh, let's see. And then I'm going to shoot at ISO 1600 to achieve that F5. Again, it's nighttime, no natural light coming in. These light bulbs are pretty bright, but to get the F5, um, it takes a lot. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to punch in once, twice, uh, just get some focus real quick. Again, I'll probably refocus once she gets here. And then what I'm going to do is zoom in. And again, this is a constant aperture lens, so I can do this. If you've got one of these lenses that go from 3.5 to 5.6, you can't do this. But go ahead and zoom in. And what I'm going to do is get uh, hit the info button again and again. And I got the histogram. And then what you can see, I've got my three spikes. And there's the white. and you know, I know I've always had the digital calibration target with the black on the left side. And just want to enforce the idea that even though the white is on the left side of the digital calibration target, the white is still on the right side of the histogram. So when reading the histogram, we can see that gray spike looks perfect. It's slightly underexposed. Um, if I go to 4.5, which I don't want to do really, um, it goes above that middle point. So. 5.0 should be a great place to start. I'll just take a picture. And those bars just indicate that you took a picture in movie mode. So we're gonna do back, go back to the menu, go back to the second red menu, go to custom white balance, say okay. 
then come back to uh, hit the WB button on top and then make sure we're in the custom white balance. And then you can just see that, you know, all the different colors, that's way too warm. And so what I do is, uh, like I said before, I'm gonna be going from a very cool look to a very warm look. I'm gonna be doing that in speed grade. All right, I wanna interrupt myself for just a minute, um, talk about a few items, and then actually show you the commercial because then it'll make a lot more sense as you watch me film it. Um, so there, one of my favorite comments I get online is, Dave, you've improved so much since you first started, and I love that comment. And I'll let you, let you in on a secret. And basically what I do is I copy stuff. Um, I don't show it publicly, um, and we're gonna be doing that here. Um, I'm basically copying a commercial. It's a 30 second commercial, and this is a great exercise. Because if you can tell a story within 30 seconds, you're doing awesome. It's not an easy thing to do. So what I'm doing here is this particular story. Um, if you wanna watch it, um, it's how to grade, how, how your grade helps tell your story. It's done by Warren Eagles. It's actually, um, the commercial is an Australian com uh, commercial and there's a, there's an ad agency, a DP, and a whole bunch of different people worked on this particular commercial. It's pretty simple. Um, and that's one of the reasons I liked it is there's, you don't, you don't need, need major talent. You could just grab your friend off the street. Basically, I just grabbed one of my friends and we just went through this uh, video. I didn't even tell her what it was about. If I wasn't filming this, it probably would only take an hour to do, maybe an hour to edit, maybe an hour to color, you know, three hours invested. Um, but it's kind of like a mini course in itself because it'll raise your level of expertise and, and storytelling and all these different things up significantly just within that three hours. It's like a mini master class in how to do something, especially if you, as you're going around online and you find stuff you really like, um, bookmark it, favorite it. Uh, put it into a folder that's online inspiration. And then when you have spare time, you can go ahead and do something like this. So what's great about these little clips is um, you don't have to storyboard anything. You don't have to do anything. Pre-production becomes so much easier. You know, it's already done. You just pick a hero shot from each clip. In this particular commercial, there's 12, 13 shots. And I just write down, I think it's a F8, 28 millimeters, you know, brings dish from table to sink. Um, and that's not actually what she's doing. She was in the laundry room. Um, there, there, there's takes place in the laundry room and it's about donations and mine, I twisted it to make it about adoption and I did it in the kitchen with a dishwasher. So it's different, but I'm still copying the same idea. Um, so I'll just print out each one. So it's a really, you know, pre-production wise, it's really easy. You print out a hero shot, you put them on a sheet and then you spend like an hour shooting it. Um, like I said, an hour editing and an hour coloring and you're done. It's like this mini masterclass. It's just, it will, I, I, I guarantee it. I like one, this exercise I did here, I learned a ton. I, every time I do something like this, I learn. And my, my learning just keeps progressing and getting better and better. And then I get those compliments saying, Dave, you, you've improved so much, which is, I love, I love hearing that comment. So go ahead and watch the commercial. Actually, the first shot, we're actually chopping her head off to make it more mysterious. <laughs> so what we're gonna do first, um, I'm gonna start the slide probably about right here, and when she gets up, I'll finish right about here. So when I say action, I'll go ahead and hit record. Go ahead, action. And I'll just follow her as she goes up to the sink. Just that easy. Not much to it. In fact. What I talked about before is, you know, sometimes getting a second angle. Um, I'm chopping off her head, which is great, but I don't, I want to maybe go up a little bit higher and then go a little bit in. Might as well do it a second take. It's, it's always... Right <laughs> and action. All right, perfect. Now the refrigerator just turned on. I don't really care. Like I said before, we're not doing much audio here. So 
Um, it's gonna be a mostly music in the background. All right, now we got the dishwasher turned on and we're going to basically just do the last shot, which is a pull away shot. Um, and I might try a pull in shot, a slide in and a slide out. I can only go so far before I can see this in the frame at the very end. So I'm just gonna hit start recording and just kind of slowly pull back. So all right, next up we're doing a kind of over the shoulder shot. Um, I'm gonna do two shots actually where she's taking her hair and putting it back behind her ear. So first thing I'm gonna do is, uh, I, I'm a, I don't wanna shoot a F5 like I did before. So I'm gonna be bringing that down to 2.8. I want this really shallow. So it got really bright. So now we're gonna take our ISO and bring that down. So what I do now is just get exposure and um, take a look at the, in terms of where I wanna set the exposure. So um, I brought it down to I, ISO 320. Um, I'm at F2.8 because I want a really shallow depth of field. Um, and it looks pretty good. It looks like it's slightly underexposed. We could probably bring this up to 400, but I have a feeling I'll be backing it down just because of the mood of the piece. I think I want it actually darker, but let's take a look at it right now. Cause right now it says we're a stop over, um, on here, but the histogram, we can see that we're right dead on. So now that I've got, um, that set up, I'm going to take the info so I can actually see the screen. Um, most of this has to do about her ear because she's going to be putting her hair behind her ear. It's going to go and focus right on her earring and that looks good. All right. And action. Okay. So that the first part of her doing that, um, we're now going to go and get a close up. All right, next up, the next shot we're doing is an extreme close-up. She's supposed to be looking down at the kitchen sink. We've kind of shifted it around. We're kind of cheating. Um, you can't see the background anyway because it's it's a lighter background. Um, I'm shooting at f2.8, so I'm, we're cheating here a little bit. And the light coming from there, I'm gonna I'm using a, just a white foam board to reflect some light back up onto her eyes because I didn't want to have like uh, raccoon eyes. So what I'm gonna do now is go ahead and focus right on her eyelid. Right there. And um, what I'm gonna do here is have her finish off. This is gonna be the second part of her pulling the hair back. And, and I'm, exposure wise, I kept it pretty much the same. That looked good. Why don't you do it one more time? See if you can get one strand. This is not only she acting, she's holding, she's doing uh, the lighting as well. She's doing the hairdressing as well. <laughs> Excellent. All right, in this next uh, quick scene, again, these are a lot of quick clips that are probably only last for maybe two seconds on screen. Um, but Megan's just going to basically, just a close up of the trash can, um, and she's just going to throw it out. Um, I've just looked at the exposure. It looks pretty good. So I'm just going to hit uh, record and uh, action. And there's not much to it. I don't even think we need a second take. <laughs> All right. So next up, we're going to do an over the shoulder shot. Um, let's go ahead and lean in a little bit so I can see the red. Yeah. And then rotate. Well, you're going to pick it up, right? and bring it towards like yeah and then what I'm going to do is focus on it at that point so try to remember that point mm -hmm. where you're at it's going to focus on the photograph right there curse around make sure it looks okay and it looks fine and again we don't really have to do a whole bunch of stuff in terms of white balance every single time over and over again because it's all the same lighting um, it's not changing um, so I'm usually what I'm doing now is when I set up the ISO um, I just usually do it based off of what I think it should look like, right? I think it could even go a little darker. Let's try, let's try 250 because that actually looks pretty good. All right, now go put it back to where it's going to start from. Yeah, that's a good spot. And now I'm just going to say, and actually kind of angle it a little bit. Um, yeah, like right about, I just put it on the top shelf. Yeah. 
There we go. And then when I say action, try to pull, pick it up, hold it for like uh, uh, two or three seconds, and then put it back. And bring it out? Yeah, put it out, bring it out to exactly where you had it okay. before, if okay. you can remember exactly what it is. All right, and action. All right, so now we've got the dishwasher shot. I'm actually putting my 5D Mark III inside the dishwasher, which is, I know, sounds kind of crazy. So we've got our field monitor. Um, I haven't been using it for this because, you know, that's not something you guys might have. Um, but in this case, I really need it because it doesn't have an articulating screen and I can't bring it back out. Um, this one, I don't want to do f2.8. I want this, I want to be able to see stuff that's close and stuff that's far away as well. So I'm going to f eight so the image is a lot darker so just trying to do this by memory coming from the front of the camera is not so easy so i hit the iso button and i'll probably kick this up to everything's backwards probably 3200 is my guess um hit the iso button again and then what i'm going to try to do i'm going to push this in That looks pretty good. Play with the focus a little bit. That looks pretty good. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna actually disconnect it and hit record. And so that's pretty much it for the commercial. I learned a lot by doing it. Um, I always learn. It's when you get into the headspace of lots of different people, you'll learn a lot. Um, I highly recommend that as an exercise. Again, not something you can really put on your demo reel, but um, it will definitely elevate your game much faster. Um, and I hope you learned a lot from this course, over four hours of training. It's, a, it's a, Again, this is a very beginner level course and I'm, I plan on doing more advanced courses in the near future. So that's pretty much it. I, I, I sincerely hope you got a lot of it. It brings you up to speed very quickly. Um, if you're looking on the photography side of things and you want to elevate your game there, um, my friend Michael Andrew uh, runs a site called michaelthemaven.com. I'll put the URL right here. Um, definitely go check him out. He has similar products to mine, about the same price, about the same duration, um, but it only deals just with photography side of things. So. Now you're getting good at video and you want to get good at uh, doing stills as well because that's one of the things I love about this camera is you can both do stills and awesome video all in the same camera. It's awesome. All right, that's pretty much it. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.